بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala most gracious most merciful الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. We praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى. We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, his entire household. We ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to bless them all, to bless all his companions, and to bless every single one of us and our offspring to come up to the end. May Allah سبحانه وتعالى bless us all and grant us ease and goodness. Amin. My brothers and sisters, we all know that we are in the month of Sha'ban at the moment, correct? We all know that there are a few more days left before we start fighting about the moon, correct? <laughs> Did I say something wrong? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive this ummah. May Allah forgive us all. We all know that Ramadan is about to begin. It normally begins with instead of moon sighting, moon fighting. Have you heard that? And this is why, as an ummah, we need to understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept something unique for us. It's a gift of the month of Ramadan. Do not spoil it by fighting over things wherein there is a difference in jurisprudence. So where you will never be able to bring all the people onto one opinion, you'd rather say, you know what? If you believe this is valid and correct, alhamdulillah. If I believe this is valid and correct, alhamdulillah. We are still brothers and sisters in the deen. You start today, I start tomorrow. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. But ideally, we should be trying to get ourselves onto one platform for the moon. But if you were to take a look at the time of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum regarding certain matters such as the one that glares us in the face, the incident of Banu Qurayza and the Salatul Asr, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told his companions, لَا يُصَلِّيَنَّ أَحَدُكُمُ الْعَصْرَ إِلَّا فِي بَنِي Qurayza." He says, none of you should read Salatul Asr except in Bani Qurayza. So they immediately rushed towards Banu Qurayza. The time of Salatul Asr was about to expire. Some of them said, we'd rather read it now. Others said, no, let's read it in Bani Qurayza. So some stopped and read it and others waited and read it later on. But the benefit was that later on when they asked Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he confirmed that both of them, the intention was to follow the instruction of the Prophet. One of them understood that for that day, salah was connected to a time and not a place. And that was Banu Quraida. And the others understood that what was meant was only make haste, but it was not an instruction to delay salah, which is supposed to be during a specific time frame. And from this we learn that sometimes there will be differences of opinion and we can do very little about it. However, I want to talk about preparation of the month of Ramadan or for the month of Ramadan. I know that a lot of us, mashallah, we buy an extra freezer in the homes. Am I right? <laughs> because it's the month where we're not supposed to be eating. So we just freeze the food. <laughs> May Allah forgive us. Wallahi, it has become the case. So much so, you know, at the moment, and this is something I laughed at when I heard it. At the moment in South Africa, we're going through a very cold spell. Suddenly, it's a very cold spell. So there was a joke doing its rounds on uh, social media saying, the reason why there's a cold spell is all the Muslim sisters are opening their freezers, admiring the savories, mashallah. <laughs> so it's, it's dropped the temperature. Obviously, that was just a joke. But it's a fact that we have so much of food, the biggest thing we prepare when it comes to the month of Ramadan, is food. We have savories, we have pies, we have samosas, we have so many other things. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. We forget that whilst it's okay to prepare when it comes to the food, we need to make sure we've prepared ourselves spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally for this beautiful month, which is the month of the year. شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات وبينات من الهدى والفرقان. It is the month of Ramadan in which the Quran was revealed. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says. It is indeed the criterion, this Quran, the value of it is being mentioned in this, being made mention of in this beautiful verse. 
where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the term Shahru Ramadan. No other month of the year is mentioned with this particular term, Shahr, and then the month straight after it. Shahru Ramadan is the only one. And similarly, we find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the prescription of fasting. And the term used is kutiba alaykum. You know, it's been prescribed for you. And I like to always think of a prescription. You know, when you say, I got a prescription, what are you talking about? Medicine, medicine. This is medicine. Wallahi, it is spiritual medicine. It is religious medicine. It is medicine for the soul, for the heart. It actually improves your body as well. So it is medicine. I recall reading some tweets early morning today. And uh, I had just landed from Lagos, mashallah. And I was reading a few tweets. A lot of them wouldn't have believed that I was going to be here, mashallah. May Allah forgive us. <laughs> but at the same time, what is definitely true is I read a tweet that said, I'm so happy Ramadan is around the corner. I'm looking forward to losing weight. <laughs> Allahu Akbar, is that preparation for Ramadan? So we eat ourselves the entire month, uh, the entire year. And when it comes to Ramadan, we say, I'm going to lose weight. If you are fasting in order to lose weight, you have lost the ajr and the reward of the fast. The intention is wrong. And we believe in namal a'malu bin niyati wa in nama li kulli mri'im ma nawa. Every action is judged by the underlying intention. And for every person, the reward is according to what they have intended. Or the recompense is exactly per the intention. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for us to have the correct intention. Even though you will be having 18, 19 hours of fasting. I tell you what, come to Africa. <laughs> Mashallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. I was once asked, do we get a bigger reward if we fast longer hours? I'd like to think so. Wallahi, it's much more difficult. The determination, inshallah, bi-idhnillah. You get the reward of the fasting, inshallah, because the reward of the fasting is in the hadith. The Prophet sallallahu says, Man sama ramadana imanan wa ihtisaban, ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhambi. Whoever fasts the month of Ramadan with conviction, belief in Allah, and convinced that they're going to be rewarded by Allah, looking forward to the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will definitely have all their previous sins wiped out. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wipe them out for us. But when you have longer fasts and when you know that it's quite difficult by the will of Allah, there are two things that will happen. Guess what? Two things will happen. The first is, Three decades down the line, you're going to have fasts which will be absolutely short. So there will be a recompense for that, inshallah. <laughs> Are you ready to wait for that much time? But the second thing is, because of the length of it, and because of the determination, because of the fact that you still kept the fast, and because of the fact that, subhanallah, it was so difficult and I still did it for the sake of Allah, I will indeed achieve a greater reward by the will of Allah. You know, as-sawmu li wa ana ajzi bihi. That's the hadith. Qudsi. The Prophet ﷺ is telling us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I, re I am the one who recompenses the reward of the fast because it is for me. It's done for me. Subhanallah. My worshipper stays away from food and drink and permissible desires uh, and so on. For, for my sake, I will reward him. Only Allah knows. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward us. So how do I prepare for the month of Ramadan besides the food and so on and so forth? The truth is, I need to start softening the heart of mine right now, right here, because we're in the month of Sha'ban. And this is why you have the fast of Sha'ban. The Prophet ﷺ used to fast quite a bit, you know. And we are told not to fast when it comes to the last days and so on because of certain reasons. Some people used to say, oh, I don't know if the moon is sighted. Is it sighted, not sighted? Let's just fast this day. It's called Yawm Shek, the day of the doubt. You're not allowed to fast on that day. You have to be certain Ramadan has started and then you fast. You don't just say, maybe let's just benefit of the doubt. We fast in case, in case. Ramadan doesn't start off in case. It starts and it starts. We know it has commenced. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy. If you're not going to soften your heart, how will you see the last Ramadan that you're ever going to witness in your life? It might just be this coming Ramadan. You might never see another one ever. Is it possible? Yes, it's possible. So start softening your heart towards what? Towards Allah to start with. Soften your heart towards Allah. The month of the Qur'an. We heard a moments ago the verse I read, Surah Al-Baqarah, where Allah is speaking about Shahr Ramadan being the month of, that the Qur'an was revealed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala confirms Laylatul Qadr in Surah Al-Qadr, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
What a beautiful surah. Where Allah is confirming to us that the Quran is revealed on this night of decree. The night of decree where it is being decreed what is going to happen for the next entire year. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that night, do you know what is this night of decree? It is a night that is better than a thousand months. That's 83 or 84 years. One night. Better than so much in terms of decades. Longer than the lifespan perhaps of the bulk of us. One night. In order to benefit from the night, I need to start getting up for tahajjud from now. Once in a while. At least once, twice a week. Shouldn't we be fasting every Monday and Thursday, my brothers and sisters? I've seen a clip of someone who was a non-Muslim and he said that according to medicine and according to his studies, the healthiest thing you could do as a human being is to fast two days a week. And he says the two days that he chooses Monday and Thursday. When he says it, everyone says, oh wow, let's start fasting. But when the Prophet ﷺ did it, and it's a sunnah, and you get a reward, then we don't do it. I call on you, my brothers and sisters, honestly, try it out once in a while. You know, tahajjud is a salah that is so powerful and beautiful. If you were to get up for suhoor every Monday and Thursday, perhaps you can read a little bit of tahajjud. Perhaps you can be awake at that time of the night when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends to the lowest heaven and the questions are being asked. هَلْ مِنْ تَائِبٍ فَأَتُوبَ عَلَيْهِ هَلْ مِنْ مُسْتَغْفِرٍ فَأَغْفِرَ لَهِ هَلْ مِنْ سَائِلٍ فَأُعْطِيَهِ Is there anyone seeking forgiveness that I can forgive them? Allah is asking. Is there anyone repenting that I can accept the repentance? Allah is asking. Is there anyone who has any need whatsoever that I can fulfill that need? And what are we doing? We're busy sleeping. Can't you get up a few times? Or do you wait for a big problem to happen in your life before you get up? For salah, for Quran, for prayer, for supplication. Many of us are guilty of not turning to Allah during days of ease. And then we expect Allah to rush to us during difficult times. Whereas the hadith tells us the opposite. It says, Get close to Allah. Know Allah. Become acquainted with Allah during your easy days. And Allah will rush to you during your difficult days. Allah will know you. Meaning He's going to come to your help during difficult days. But with us, Sadly, we wait for difficult days. Guess what? That too is the mercy of Allah. When you're going through big problems and huge issues and major matters in your life and that brings you to the sajjada, it brings you to the musalla, so to speak. It brings you to your salah. It makes you cry. It makes you lift your hands in prayer. You need to know that that was a gift of Allah. He loves me. He's brought me closer to Him through my problem and my difficulty. This is what it is. But sometimes... We have the opportunity to get up for Salatul Tahajjud or to fast, but we still don't do it. Can I give you an example? When the sports that we follow, the sport that we follow or more than one that we follow, when there happens to be an important match, whether it is cricket or football or anything else, we will stay awake, we will watch, we want to see. We want to make sure these people are playing. I don't know, someone played last night, if I'm not mistaken. And I honestly don't know who. Do you believe me? Besides someone telling me on Twitter that, please, please, I've got a very, very important dua that you need to make for me. Can you guess what it was? Like the guy was dying, I thought, you know. Maybe someone passed away. He's got, you know, just cancer or something. May Allah grant cure to all those who are sick and ill. I mean. But he says, make dua, my team wins. <laughs> Come on, relax. <laughs> Allah forgive us. 
I wonder what that brother must be doing on Laylatul Qadr. Oh Allah, my team, my team, ya Allah. How shallow can we become? Subhanallah. We cry for the ball on Laylatul Qadr, but brother, your entire life, your offspring and everything you're leaving them, your spouse and whatnot, everything else is besides the point. Because I want to see one guy who cuts his hair like a monkey, hold a big football, meaning hold a big, uh, you know, what, what's it called? A, a cup, mashallah. I don't know why they call it cups. It's no longer a cup. It's just a medal or something. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. This is the reality. We have downgraded ourselves right to this level. And then we want to say, mashallah, I'm happy to be a, you know, I'm a good Muslim, alhamdulillah. You know, I got up for tahajjud, made dua that this team, made, you know, wins. I've heard people say this. May Allah forgive us, really. So the reason I raise this is to show you how petty we've become. We should be leading a slightly more serious life. I'm not saying that you should divorce yourself from sport or divorce yourself from a little bit of halal recreation and so on. No, enjoy, but within the limits of Allah. I thought of something, astaghfirullah. <laughs> May Allah forgive me. I went skydiving. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. And I think it, it made headlines. And that's why I, everywhere I go, Sheikh, how was the skydive? I say, brother, relax. <laughs> but I learned one thing that people have come to understand. That that which is halal and permissible in terms of recreation, go for it. Go for it, subhanallah. Why not? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. And this is why you notice a lot of the du'at and the ulama and the scholars now what they're doing is they're participating in some of the games and some of the recreations and you know you have a little retreat and everything happy in order to to live uh, to show people not as in showing off but to show people that this is a proper example that is permissible i tell you why people are picking on islam and saying islam is a dry faith where they, it's so boring you just got to pray pray and pray all day i said that a little bit earlier and i'm repeating it now that is so far from being true because Today we are here. What are we doing? Wallahi, we are learning. We are trying to be motivated. But at the same time, we hope that we're enjoying, you know, the, the afternoon here. MashaAllah. By the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is Islam. I remember my father used to tell us when we were much younger to do certain things and we used to enjoy it. And later on when I grew up, he t told me how to speak to my own children. He says, when you speak to them, and you want to give them the most important instruction ever. Do it like you're playing a game with them. It doesn't have to be, hey, this is the commandment, that's it. You do this, otherwise. <laughs> Children of today will say, I'm not going to do it. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> that's the answer, I promise you. That's the answer you get today. Dad, you can go to hell. Astaghfirullah. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make him say, Dad, you can go to Jannah. I mean, I mean. Don't you agree? The times have changed. The message has not changed. But the way you convey the message is definitely. We take it from the, Muhammad, from the Sunnah of Muhammad وسلم, definitely. But he has taught us that you've got to use wisdom and tact. You may use different methods. He used different methods. And subhanallah, we are taught to use the most effective method. So maybe the method might change, but the core of the message will always remain the same. So my brothers and sisters, inshallah, Let's try and plan to fulfill our voluntary fasts of the week, inshallah. Monday, Thursday, Monday, Thursday, every Monday and Thursday. And guess what? As a result, if you do lose weight, it's just a bonus. It was not the underlying intention. So after Ramadan, you lost weight. You've got to say, Alhamdulillah. But you don't say, oh Allah, I'm going to fast so that I can lose weight. No, you fast for the sake of Allah because He tells you. And this is why, my brothers and sisters, I want to tell you one very important factor today. Did you know that when you're opening the fast, some people call it breaking the fast, but let's call it opening the fast, okay? At the end of the day, that particular moment, what do you put in your mouth? You need to put the things or the food that is as healthy as ever at that particular juncture. I tell you why, because we, a lot of us are guilty of having savories and fries. Do you agree? And that's the most unhealthy thing you could ever have. Try and substitute it this year. Or am I too late? Was it already ordered and packed away? <laughs> Try and substitute it this year with a little bit, with some dates, some water, a bit of plain yogurt, with some brown bread perhaps, some olives, something healthy, subhanallah, and see how you feel. 
You know, they say go green, go green, not only the ecosystem and not only the environment, but even with your food, mashallah, go green, inshallah, and you see what happens. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us in every way. All I mean is eat healthy. Let's not think that now that the fast is open or now that we're breaking the fast at the end of the day, we need to do qada for the, for the whole day. 19 hours, so, you know, we're putting it into our mouths. One after the other, everything's gone down and we get up for salat to tarawih. <laughs> May Allah forgive us. Wallahi, it's a reality. We suffer in the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of people who've been munching like... Astaghfirullah. <laughs> Like they've never seen food before. Is that Ramadan? Is that the blessed month? Is it a month of, you know, just staying hungry and then suddenly eating as much as you can in the little slot that you have and then disturbing everybody in the little salah that you're going to be reading and after that, stop eating once again. Is that what Ramadan is? Wallahi, it's a blessed month. It's a month of discipline. Discipline yourself. And this is why... The hadith speaks of barakah in suhoor. You know, the suhoor that we have, the barakah in it is more important than the quantity. The less you eat in suhoor, the more energetic you are through the day, the less hungry you will be through the day. If you eat so much, the enzymes are digesting the food. And I can picture it, you know, subhanallah, just biting out at the food and trying to break it down and so on. And by the time it's, you know, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock in the morning, 10 o'clock, the enzymes are crying for more or it now becomes acidic. Now your belly starts rumbling and you can hear the sounds of your belly. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May Allah forgive us. It's a month of discipline. Let's go and revisit the month of Ramadan. What's it all about? It's a month of discipline. It's a month of the Quran. It's a month to get close to the Quran. The problem with us, we have several issues and this is why we're here to remind one another and believe me, the reminder is for myself to begin with and then for everyone else. I am guilty of not reading enough Quran through the year. I am guilty of it. How many of us here are guilty of it as well? MashaAllah. Jazakumullah for being honest. I am honest as well. We can do better. I can do better. I will do better by the help of Allah. And not just say, make dua for me, I want to do better. <laughs> That's a lame excuse. Make dua for me. I've already started doing better. I want to maintain and even build on that. That's a proper dua. You know, a sister wants to get into hijab. She says, make dua for me. Make dua. Dua alone. You won't cover your head with the hands. You know, dua. I'm making dua. That's, that's my hijab. That's not your hijab. Dua together with an effort, my sister. An effort. A little bit of an effort. So we will make dua by all means. But you make an effort as well. Ask Allah. Oh Allah, I've started. I've made my intention. I am determined. Oh Allah, help me to be steadfast, to be strong, to, and so on. The same applies to salah. I've come across people who admit that, you know, I only read four salah a day. But make dua. Inshallah, I'll read five one day. And for the last three years, we've been making the same dua. Is that fair? You need to move forward. Come on, man. You, you don't know when you're going to meet with Allah. Yes, if you were only reading one salah and you started reading two a day, you've improved 100%, but you haven't got to 100% of the salah. We pat you on the back for the improvement and we say, MashaAllah, great. But that doesn't mean they're two salah a day for the Muslims. No, they're five a day. So from two, you need to get to three, to four, to five. And this is explained beautifully when it comes to business. If any one of us are in business, or even if you're getting a salary and you're working, uh, when your salary is uh, sitting at so many pounds for the last so many years, what do you want? You want an increment, don't you? You want it to get better. When you have a business and you have one department store, for example, or one shop or supermarket, whatever you want to call it, and it's doing well. What do you think of opening another branch? Right? Because you want to make a bit more money. You want to do better. Why do we think of it when it comes to preparing for the dunya? But we don't think of it when it comes to preparing for the akhirah. I need to do better. Wallahi, I need to do better. I need to make an effort to attend the durus in the masajid in the month of Ramadan. For me to be able to achieve that, I must start now. You know, I come from Zimbabwe where, subhanallah, the farming is quite a big thing. You know, the land there is so, so fertile that if you, if you drop seeds, you know, if you were to spit out a date seed, you would probably have a plantation there in no time. Really. Alhamdulillah. So, so fertile by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But... In order for us to be able to cultivate properly 
And in order for us to be able to plant on a larger scale, we need to clear the land. We need to prepare before the rainy season. Because when the rains come and then you start preparing too late, the rains will only soften up. And this is why did you know, and I'm talking about my, my place, my country, the first rains you have shower in October, mid-October, you have a shower. What does it do? It softens the land. After that, for a whole month, it doesn't rain. You can actually check the date a lot of the times. This date, it will probably rain by then. A day this way, that way. Then you have November, mid-November, and the rain starts a little bit more. And then you come to December and it is going on. Subhanallah. Look at how Allah gives us an opportunity prior to the proper rainy season where the showers come once, soften the land, for us to go and flatten it, for us to, you know, uh, make the markings, to plant the seeds and so on before the rains come. This is why I say the month of Ramadan is quite similar. You want to sow the seeds. You need to start now sowing the seeds so that you can enjoy the plantation during the month. And guess what? The day of Eid, you have the fruit to enjoy. And let's not be people who worship Allah solely in the month of Ramadan. As soon as Ramadan goes, hijab is gone, salah is gone, the nightclubs are back, the casinos are back, the adultery is back, everything's back. And we say, Ooh, we're waiting for the next Ramadan. <laughs> is that what Islam is? But people are doing this, my brothers and sisters. It's not fair. Who are we playing a game with? With Allah, the one who made me, the one who made you, the one whom if I were to close my eyes now, subhanallah, right now, if I were to close my eyes, I would be in His mercy completely. And the only thing I would take with me is the good deeds I've done. Let's call, let's help one another. Let's call out to one another to do good. Let's ask Allah to help us, but let's be serious about the dua and the supplication. So my brothers and sisters, one beautiful way of preparing is your five salah. Do not miss a single one from now. From now. Make an intention to say, listen, come what may, I'm reading my salah. Come what may. You know, someone asked me, what if I'm sitting on a coach? So what? If you're sitting on a coach and the bus driver doesn't want to stop, so what? You start reading salah where you are, on that seat. You have no excuse. You have no excuse. The hadith says, Salli qa'iman fa illam tastati' fa qa'idan fa illam tastati' fa ala jamb. Read standing salah. That's the idea. That's the proper way. If you cannot, then you read sitting. It does not only refer to medical illness or sickness, although that is definitely there. But if you cannot for some reason stand, then you sit and read. I remember a question. Somebody asked me saying, you know, in my office, they don't allow me to read salah. But I, I could sit on my chair and read it. I said, so then they do allow you to read salah. <laughs> Or they might not be allowing you to do it in an ideal way because the ideal way is definitely standing. But if you really cannot, you, don't, you do not have an excuse to leave your salah, come what may. Did you know that on the day of judgment, the first thing that you're going to be asked about is your five daily prayers. If that is in order, inshallah, you have good news for the rest of it. It will all be made easy as per the hadith of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if that is not in order, be careful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us steadfast. So don't leave your salah. Read it. Come what may. Fulfill it. Do your wudu. Don't be embarrassed to, to be identified as a Muslim. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to fulfill our salah. And to, may He make us better people. So if you want to start preparing for Ramadan, start with your five salah. Because in Ramadan you have taraweeh. You have extra salah. And you want to read it come. You want to be in love with Allah. When you're in love with Allah, you want to chat with Him much longer. And I'm sure we know, when you're in love with someone, you care for them, and you're chatting with them, say on your mobile device, because we all have them. Time flies, doesn't it? It flies. Before you know it, oh, I haven't even slept. It's already two o'clock. We will sleep, not realizing Salat al-Fajr is just now, right now. According to some people, it's already started. You know that in the UK, I know there's a disaster. When is Salah starting? Oh no, may Allah forgive us. So the truth is, if you are regular upon your five Salah, you will enjoy your Taraweeh. You know what Taraweeh is? Raha. It's supposed to be comfort. It's supposed to be something easing, relaxing, soothing. But a lot of us, Taraweeh, what happens to us? We are tense. We want to finish. We look at the clock. I recall, wallahi, without a joke, 
A man who was reading Salat al Taraweeh next to me once. We were behind an imam, a beautiful place. And this guy is looking at his watch. Once. He looked at it. A second time. Third time he did this. <laughs> You'd rather have not insulted Allah. Close that salah and go and do what you have to and then come back. May Allah forgive us. How can we, how can we do this? Such people are not prepared for the month of Ramadan. Prepare now. Relax. Take it easy. You have a bad habit. Quit it now. Many of us say, inshallah, as soon as Ramadan starts, I'm quit smoking. Why wait for Ramadan? You might not see it. Say, oh Allah, I quit now because Ramadan is round the bend. By the time it comes, I want to be a pure person. So if you die in the process, you've already made such noble intentions. The reward for having abstained would be written next to your name already. What beauty. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. So, my brothers and sisters, let's become regular with salah. Is that our deal? We struck the deal, inshallah? Inshallah, alhamdulillah. You know, we have a problem. When you say inshallahs and ameens for things like these, you find them very low. And I always say, the minute you say, oh Allah, bless us with wealth. Ameen! You know, <laughs> everyone wants money. You say, oh Allah, bless us with the best of spouses. And what happens? Ameen, loudly. And especially the married guys. I don't know what, what they're up to. <laughs> Subhanallah. So my brothers and sisters, let's learn to say Ameen for the decent to us as well because they are decent. May Allah make us steadfast upon our Salah. Ameen. MashaAllah. Alhamdulillah. May Allah really make us steadfast on our Salah. So that's one way of preparing for Ramadan. Another way of preparing for this beautiful month of Ramadan. My brothers and sisters, this is a very, very serious point. None of us have an excuse. We all have mobile devices, right? All of us. In fact, I want to ask you, who does not have a mobile device? Put up your hand. MashaAllah. One, two, three. See me later on, I'll give you one, inshallah. You have a... Oh, sorry, I, I was just joking, by the way. You have a Qur'an in your device. You have the Qur'an with a translation, with a reciter to read it and you can copy it. Do you agree? It's far better than what it was some time back. You have so many tutorials. You have the Qur'an app. You have some beautiful applications that are free of charge. You click a button, you press it and you can hear, subhanallah, a, a reader of your choice, read the verse of your choice and the translation of your choice being recited and read out to you at any time of the day or night. Do you agree? And still we find ourselves not knowing the meaning of the Qur'an. We can do better. That's the best way of saying it. Because I'm not one to say, guys, you're doomed. Guys are doomed. You don't know the Qur'an, astaghfirullah. Can't you feel the fire of Jahannam behind you already? <laughs> no, my brothers and sisters, no. The maximum we will tell you is, you can do better, inshallah. You can do better. We can all, I so can I. I can do much better than what I am. But this is a powerful point to say, Allah's made it so easy. Allah knows how lazy we've become. Allah knows how lazy we've become. So what He's done for us as a gift is He's blessed us with technology. But what do we use it for? I don't even want to say, I heard someone say, just. Is that what you said? May Allah forgive us. Wallahi, I don't know if I heard right. And I don't know if you were all thinking of the same just and I was. <laughs> That's not what it's all about. That's not preparation for Ramadan. That's not what Allah wants from us. What Allah wants from us is to use technology. Your phone will bear witness for you or against you on the day of judgment. The Quran is in it. Al Quran hujjatul laka aw alayk. The Prophet ﷺ says clearly, the Quran will come forth on the day of judgment and bear witness for you or against you. We can easily tell which way the Quran is going to bear witness for us, or which way it's going to bear witness for or against. May Allah forgive us. Try, T-R-Y, that's the word, try. We get excited when we go to the perfume shop and we see that word on one of the perfumes, right? Because we know that means I can spray as much as I want. <laughs> but that's the word, when it comes to your deen, try your best, give it your sh the best shot. Every day, promise Allah that at some point of the day, I cut out for five minutes, dedicated to the word of Allah. I will read the verse, I will read its meaning, I will hear its recitation, I will repeat the recitation, and I will repeat the meaning of it. And then I will think about it for a few minutes, I will close it, and I will continue with the rest of my day. Is that very difficult to do? No. Not at all. The question is, do we promise Allah that we're going to do that? 
I only heard one yes. <laughs> I told you moments ago that when we say things, people find it a little bit, they're reluctant to say yes. Will we promise Allah that we are going to read the Quran better than we have been so far? Yes. Inshallah. Look, I'm, the reason I'm making you say yes is that yes is going to bear witness <laughs> for you or against you. So try, keep trying by the will of Allah. Ask Allah's forgiveness. So if we start our link with the Quran now through the intention we have today and here. Don't wait for going out and say, okay, now make an intention, Ya Allah, I'm going to read this Quran. I'm going to read your book before I sleep every night. Every morning, as soon as I wake up, five minutes. Is that too much time? Rather than, you know, press the snooze button and snooze for five minutes, you rather press another button and read Quran for those five minutes. May Allah make it easy for us all. I mean, so when you've developed a link with Allah, guess, or when you're developing a link with the Quran, guess who you're developing the link with? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because it's His word. And that will open all your doors. The Quran is the manual of life, living. And not only living, but it will take you into the akhirah in a beautiful way. It will lead you to the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It will make you a person. It will improve you as an individual. But you need to take the time to do it. Make an effort. Be dedicated. If you have to catch a train every morning at 7, trust me, 5 to 7 you're at the station. Agreed? Wallahi, it's a fact. Why can't we get up five minutes earlier and just read Quran? How many minutes are we saying? Five. And then we can improve it. Ten and fifteen and twenty. Then we can start memorizing. And then inshallah our link will improve. And we find we'll get the answers to a lot of our questions regarding our own lives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love us in return. And we will be from amongst those who start putting into practice what we've learned. We start putting into practice. So this is the month of the Qur'an. And this is why I say, like I started off by saying, let's try out these voluntary fasts by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 13th, 14th and 15th of every month. MashaAllah, sunnah. They're known as ayyam al bil The white days. You know when you have the full moon, basically. And then we have the Qur'an. Beautiful. And then we have the sacrifice of the month of Ramadan, the discipline. You know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says? Ya ayyuhal amanu kutiba alaykum usiyamu kama kutiba ala alladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon O you who believe. Fasting has been prescribed upon you just like it was prescribed upon those before you in order that you may achieve God consciousness, in order that you may become conscious of your maker. Some translate it as in order that you may achieve the fear of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us achieve all of that. So I cannot just wait for the month of Ramadan and then say, oh, when I fast, I'll achieve taqwa. So let me wait until I fast. Start by promising Allah now that, Oh Allah, I've quit my sin. Oh Allah, forgive me. I admit my wrongdoings. I regret them. I seek forgiveness and I promise you I will not do them again. Those are the conditions of tawbah, of the sins that you commit between yourselves and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The minute those conditions are met, trust me, you've been forgiven. You've been forgiven. But we do not wait for the month of Ramadan for us to seek forgiveness because we may never see that month. And another thing, if you want to achieve spirituality from the month of Ramadan and closeness to Allah and taqwa, it should start here and now, before the month of Ramadan. You don't have to wait and say, okay, we'll wait for the month. No, a lot of people make dua only in Ramadan. You find them crying in Ramadan and doing so many acts of worship in Ramadan. They are charitable in Ramadan. Wallahi, if there is a need now, give now. Allah will give you a reward as though you gave in the month of Ramadan. Because people intend, you know, they, there is a narration that states good deeds that are done in the month of Ramadan. They are rewarded uh, in a more multiplied way. Okay. So people say, let me hold on to this. Let me hold on. And let me not do the good deed right now. I will wait for the month of Ramadan and then do it. But the people are dying. They need your help. People are in desperate need. You know, we heard about the, the heart hospitals where they, there is free treatment for those who are 
you know, struggling with this condition in the poorer countries, you don't say, okay, I wait for Ramadan. Five people will have died by then. May Allah not make it be the case. May Allah forgive us. You can give now and say, Allah, I wanted to give in Ramadan, but you know there is a dire need now. Allah will reward you. Innam al-a'malu bin niyat. We know that. This is a powerful narration. Your deeds will be rewarded according to the underlying intentions. My brothers and sisters, this is the beauty of Islam. It is so practical. It is so beautiful. It allows us to live a balanced lifestyle in a way that we enjoy the dunya within the limits and we achieve enjoyment of the akhirah. Everlasting, unlimited. Subhanallah, unlimited. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with Jannah. When you ask Allah for Jannah, don't only ask Him for Jannah in the month of Ramadan. I start asking Him now. Start preparing, start planning. And can I tell you, if your movement towards Allah is a millimeter at a time, an inch at a time, but it is towards Allah and not away from Allah, you are achieving. But if your movement is away from Allah, you have lost. Now we're all human beings. We all falter. We all do things we're not proud of sometimes. We all make mistakes. We all sin. None of us can say, I'm not sinful at all. But the beauty is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala extends his hand every day to forgive those who committed sin by night. And he extends his hand every night to forgive those who committed sin by day. Where are we? How many times do we seek the forgiveness of Allah? Don't wait for a blessed moment only. People say, hey, I've sinned a lot. I'm going for Umrah, inshallah. Is that the attitude? You sinned a lot, so you're going for Umrah. You sinned a lot, regret now, ask Allah's forgiveness now. You may never make it for Umrah. Who knows? Don't wait. Yes, when you go for Umrah, you repent, inshallah. Yes, we're not saying no. You, when you go for Umrah, it is a very blessed moment. You ask Allah's forgiveness. You renew your vow with Allah, meaning you go back and you say, Oh Allah, forgive me, I'm starting afresh. Here we are. That is there. But you don't wait for that moment in order to seek forgiveness. You start now. And then inshallah, you find that by the time the month of Ramadan comes, you will be a person who's already prepared for it. Like the example I gave of those who have to prepare the land in order to sow the seeds before they are able to, to benefit from the produce of that particular land. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help you all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you all goodness. Really, it's been an honor to have been here today as a guest here and to meet my brothers and sisters in Islam. And one of the, most, uh, one of the biggest highlights for me is to meet the other scholars that are here as well. Uh, it's something that I really get a lot of uh, enjoyment from, a lot of courage from, and we feel people doing good work, you know, from the heart. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help them all and to help you all. My brothers and sisters, I want, you to end, I want to end by asking you a question or by reminding you of something important. And that is, every one of you, it's your duty to serve deen, to serve Allah and to serve humanity. Humanity meaning you're serving humanity for the sake of Allah. You're serving humanity for the sake of Allah. Like we said, khairun nas and fa'uhum lin nas. The best of people are those who are most beneficial to the rest of the people. I want to ask you, how have you reached out to the rest of humanity? How have you reached out to the rest of the Muslimin or to the non-Muslims? How have you reached out to the rest of the creatures of Allah? Ask yourself. A lot of us reach out in a negative way. If you take a look at social media, you'll find many of us waste a lot of time. Wasting time is one thing, but we drop one degree lower. And that is, we become vulgar. We say bad words. We engage in immorality online. We do things that are not befitting a Muslim. Subhanallah. Death can overtake you at any time. And that is the only reality. Imagine if you had to leave here and now and your Twitter feed or your Facebook feed is there glaring the world at, at its face or in its face. And everything on it is bad, immoral, swear words. Everything else, that's not a Muslim. We follow good examples laid by people. We do not follow bad examples laid by people. We lay good examples for people. We do not lay bad examples for others to follow. So the whole world can be using social media in, a, in an immoral way that should never ever make us follow the bad example. But we should continue and persevere. And we should continue on a path of goodness and kindness and continue using that same platform to promote goodness, kindness, 
you are allowed to have a bit of fun now and again. You are allowed to enjoy the dunya within limits. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it clearly. Allah is explaining to us in Surah Qasas the story of Qarun where he speaks about how Qarun was told to seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through whatever Allah's given you. Allah's given you your health, your wealth, and everything else. Get closer to Allah through what Allah's given you. Get closer to Allah. And do not forget your portion of this worldly life. That verse is so beautiful because it reminds us you are allowed to enjoy, but within limits. La tansa nasibaka min dunya Don't forget your portion of the dunya. You get married, you have children, you enjoy life, you can go on a holiday, you can do, but you will still read salah, you will still eat halal, you will still dress appropriately, you will still go to the masjid, and so on. Alhamdulillah. May Allah make it easy for us. It's not prohibited. No. But this is the point. The verses continue to say, do not engage in corruption on earth. Allah does not like those who are corrupt, those who cause chaos. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. May He make us understand the striking of the balance between the dunya and the akhirah, between the deen and the dunya. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. 45 minutes, 52 seconds. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.